Hello, thank you for attending. Uh, in this session, we're going to be speaking about two Google products, Google AdSense and Google Ad Analytics, which are now integrating with Google BigQuery, Google's big data analysis and query engine. My name is Clancy Childs. I'm a product manager, uh, a product manager for Google Analytics. Uh, I'm Louis Collard. I'm a software engineer on AdSense. And I'm Duncan McKay. I work for Gumtree.com. So a key design principle for all Google products is to make sure that they are easy to use by the average user. This means that for reporting products like Google Ads Analytics and AdSense, we really focus on making sure that users can get to the data very quickly with very low latency and don't require a lot of deep domain knowledge about the data that's contained within those reports. Really, the idea is, is that we want these users to quickly get to the data and get some insights out of it and then go and take action. However, we also know that there's a lot of users at our clients. A lot of our clients have in their teams data scientists, uh, data savvy analysts and developers who really want a much more granular access to the data within these products. So for instance, some of the use cases that we see here are the developers that want a SQL-like query, uh, query interface so they can actually get into the granular data and really make complex queries on the data within there to sort of solve specific problems or optimize. They also tend to do things like use some of the, uh, the, the business uh, class, the enterprise class visualization tools, things like Tableau, which some of you may be familiar with. What they look for is getting this data into Tableau and doing things like building enterprise-wide dashboards so that a company can see at a glance how their business is doing using data from different data sets. And a lot of times what we've heard is that these companies want to get their AdSense and analytics data into those visualization tools as well. These users also tend to really rely on their own data warehouses. So in many cases, what they would like to do is join up data from different data sources into a single place. So for instance, a online hotel booking site may, want, may have a database that contains all of their profit margins for each online booking. And what they would like to do is join that with data from, let's say, Google Analytics, and be able to say, not only what are my most profitable transactions, but actually what were the online user behaviors that led to those transactions. So they want to be able to join this data all together in the data warehouses. Likewise, they may want to use this granular data as an input into other business applications that they may have. For instance, a, uh, an online retailer may have a personalization engine application that they've built for their homepage. And they want to take data from Google Analytics and from their CRM system, join that data together, and when a user lands on their homepage, have that application display to that user a personalized view of particular products that that user may be interested in purchasing. So all of these different use cases really require a very deep access to the data contained within these products for these data scientists users. Thanks, Clancy. So this is where BigQuery comes in. So it's Google's big data analysis engine, and it's been designed from the beginning with these kinds of use cases in mind. So we decided the best thing to do would be to leave our existing interfaces as they are for standard users and make our data available in BigQuery so that data scientists can get the access they need and take advantage of BigQuery's existing functionality. So there's a few features I'd like to call out which we think make this a really good fit. So firstly, scale. You can, uh, you can query billions of rows of data interactively. Um, so you can type an SQL-like statement into your browser and watch the results come back almost straight away. You can also query from the command line or from the API. Um, as Clancy mentioned, you're probably going to want to join the Google data we're making available with some of your own data. And BigQuery gives you a couple of options here. You can either upload your data into BigQuery and do your, all your analysis in the cloud, which can be pretty cost effective as it saves you having to own and maintain an equivalent hardware and software stack. Or if you are already using uh, uh, some third-party data warehousing analy an analysis solution, um, then BigQuery already has good integration with a number of them. So if you're using one of those, you can just import the data from BigQuery into your existing solution. 
If you are going to do that, you can still take advantage of BigQuery to reduce the volume of data that you have to import, um, either just by being selective about the rows that you import or by performing some pre-aggregation in BigQuery. Okay, so I'm going to talk now about the AdSense data we're making available. Um, hopefully this looks familiar to some of you. It's the same data which is available in the, the UI and the API. Uh, and we've got this split into five tables. So the basic daily report table exposes all of the common dimensions. And then the ad units, custom channel, and URL channel dimensions are each available in their own respective tables, which all expose all of the common dimensions as well. And lastly, we've got the domain table, which exposes date, uh, ad client, product, and domain. So all of these tables expose the same five raw AdSense metrics you see here. Uh, you'll notice that CPC, CTR, and RPM are missing from that list. That's because those are all derived from these metrics, which is something you can do easily as part of your query. So compared to the UI, this gives you quite a bit of extra flexibility in that you can request any combination of the dimensions and metrics that are available in those tables. And you can run much larger reports than you can in the UI. The data is still retrieved live, so if you're watching for updates throughout the day, you'll see those reflected in BigQuery, and the data will match what you see in the UI at all times. Uh, and obviously, it's still free to query this data, so you won't be charged by BigQuery for querying these tables. OK, so I've got here a very simple query just to retrieve your top channels by earnings, um, just to give you an idea of what it would look like, really. Uh, so you can see in blue, we're selecting and grouping by custom channel ID, and then in green, we're retrieving and ordering by the earnings. Uh, so you probably already know your top five custom channels. So more interesting might be uh, channels that have grown the most month on month. Um, so this is something that's not readily available in the UI, but in BigQuery is quite easy to retrieve. So we've got here a, a query which is joining the results of two subqueries. So in blue, we're retrieving a custom channel report for January. Uh, and then in green, this is truncated so it fits, uh, the same thing but for February. Then the outer query in red is joining the result of those two subqueries uh, on custom channel name, then calculating the delta in the number of clicks and ordering by that. So if I switch to the BigQuery browser tool, you see I've got the, the full query here. So if I just press run on that, we should pretty quickly get back an answer. And here we've got some helpfully named custom channels and the number of additional clicks I got in February compared to January. OK, so lastly, uh, we mentioned third party integration. Um, I'm going to show you a few of the kinds of things that you can do using Tableau, which is one of the products that already integrates with BigQuery. OK, so on the left-hand side here, we've got the, the dimensions and metrics that are available in the, the BigQuery table. And we're looking here at a graph of earnings from November to end of January. Uh, so you'll notice there's a, a fairly strong weekly seasonality to the data. Uh, and then we've got a much bigger dip here, which turns out to be Christmas. So interesting, nothing particularly actionable at this point. So let's dig a bit deeper. If we add, say, platform, then we can very quickly see an interesting trend pop up after Christmas, which is that the orange and red sections, which are uh, mobile and tablet devices, show quite a noticeable uplift in revenue after Christmas. So it would seem to indicate people have got some new devices for Christmas. So that kind of makes sense. Um, so we could decide to stop here and go away and optimize our site for mobile. Uh, in this example, we actually have different sites for different countries. So it's probably worth checking if, the, if all the countries are showing the same trends. So if I just exclude desktop for now, seeing as we're not interested in that at the moment, um, and then if I merge these two together, seeing as they're behaving roughly the same, change this to a line, and then add country, then we see another interesting trend. So our two main earners here are Australia in brown and the UK in gray. And it looks like it's been a pretty good Christmas for the UK. 
the uh, uplift in earnings there is a lot more, no lot more notable than, than for Australia. So at this point, we can go away and optimize our UK site for mobile first, knowing that that will have the biggest impact. Okay, so we're pleased to announce that there's a beta version of this integration uh, available for all AdSense publishers from today. Uh, all you need to do to get started is sign up for a BigQuery project using the same Google login as you use for your AdSense account, uh, and that's it. Then you can go and start querying the tables. Um, we've got step-by-step -step instructions on all of this on the uh, AdSense developer site. Um, as I said, it is a beta, so there probably will, will be some bugs. If you find them, please let us know so we can fix them. Uh, and best place to do that is on the forum. Uh, thanks very much. I'm going to pass back to Clancy. Cool. <coughs> thanks a lot, Louis. Um, so similar to the AdSense integration with BigQuery, uh, we're here today to announce what we're doing with Google Analytics and BigQuery. So what are we announcing? Uh, we're targeting in September of this year a public launch where Google Analytics Premium clients will be able to have their data from Google Analytics Premium imported into BigQuery. Uh, it's, what we're doing today is we're also opening up a developer group for developers that may be interested in working with this BigQuery integration. So I'll give you in a few minutes a, a, a link that will take you to a forum where you can register your interest in this particular integration. So what are we actually exporting? It's a daily export of all of the data within a Google Analytics profile into BigQuery. So it's a daily export. And the schema, which we'll be sharing on the developers group shortly, is, takes the shape of every row in BigQuery in this, in this integration corresponds to a session or visit in the Google Analytics profile. And so it will have information on there like uh, any sort of, any sort of vi uh, visitor or visit level custom dimensions or variables, things like traffic source. All of that visit level information is in each row. But also within each of those rows is a nested sequence of all the hits that happened in that visit. So this would mean that you, it, it, as it's in a sequence, in the order that they occurred, uh, every page view, event, e-commerce transaction, and if you're using the mobile SDKs for Google Analytics, things like exceptions and screen views. So you really actually get the hit level data as well as the session level data in each of these rows in the BigQuery export. Where possible, we are using the same dimension and metric names in, that we use for the core reporting API in Google Analytics. We're using those as the column names in BigQuery. So if you already use the core reporting API for Google Analytics, you'll have a certain amount of familiarity with the dimension, and, and the dimension names and metric names in BigQuery. One important note is that at launch, this is, this is going to contain first party data. Uh, that means any of the data that's actually collected by either the Google Analytics measurement protocol or any of the tracking code or the SDKs for mobile apps. There's some data in Google Analytics, for instance, uh, GOIP lookup, so the geography data, that's actually post-processed into Google Analytics. And that data may, might not be available at launch in September. However, we're going to continually look to expand the number of dimensions and metrics that we can uh, pass through in this export into, into BigQuery. So, Starting today, uh, if you're interested in learning more about this integration, uh, you could go to this, this uh, short link or scan the QR code. It, uh, there'll be a form there, and that form, if you just explain to us you know, what you're hoping to do, we're just trying to collect some data about exactly how people are looking forward to using this integration. And we'll join you, uh, we'll add you to the group which will be where, we, where we will be sharing things like uh, the schema when it's uh, ready, to, ready to be shared, uh, things like a sample data set and all that sort of information, especially as we come up to launch on this. So uh, please join, and uh, we'll be posting everything there shortly. But I can talk about all the things we're going to do. What makes a lot more sense is for me to invite Duncan McKee up. Uh, Duncan is a senior... There. <laughs> I like to make a bang. <laughs> So uh, Duncan is a senior business analyst for eBay Classifieds Group. eBay, uh, eBay Classifieds, are you done? I'm, I think I'm done, <laughs> I think I'm done. Sorry, guys. 
eBay Classifieds Group is a, uh, is, is a Google Analytics premium client. And they're also one of uh, our larger uh, AdSense publishers as well. So we've given Duncan early access to both of these integrations. And he's been able to run a bunch of queries and do a bunch of really interesting things with this. And he's going to take us through now some of the demos that he's prepared. So. OK, thank you, Clancy. Sorry, everybody, for the, for the bank. Uh, OK, before we get started, can I just get a quick show of hands? How many people managed to attend the big data mashup session earlier? OK, so we've got quite a few in the room. How many people managed to uh, attend the, the uh, cross-platform uh, GA optimization earlier? OK, uh, so it's good to see it's not too many people here. Uh, we'll have lots of new content for you then. OK, so I'll start off uh, just talking about who I am. I work for Gumtree.com, which is part of eBay Classifieds Group. And uh, we have probably around 42 million users um, in the last month. Uh, that's across 27 countries across the globe. Uh, and unlike other e-commerce websites, uh, we actually, although we connect our buyers and our sellers together online initially, uh, a lot of those actually go on to transact offline. Um, so for us, uh, we like to think of ourselves as a local company, even though we are global. Now, every time one of our users interacts with us, uh, be that on a website, on one of our apps, or even through one of our sales teams, that generates data. We have petabytes of the stuff. Uh, that's in MySQL, Postgres, uh, Salesforce. It all gets pulled together into a massive Teradata warehouse, which I think at the last count was around about 10 petabytes. And we also have an awful lot of external data as well, things like analytics and AdSense that we'll talk about today, uh, and a lot of other stuff like DFP, uh, PayPal, loads of different sources of data. Okay. Now we also, um, we have a lot of different brands, we have a lot of different sites across the globe, and that means that each of our uh, sites and countries operates independently. And we have a lot of these different um, stores of data. So all of our challenges are kind of magnified by th about 30 times. So we have all of our data in different locations, in different formats. And the real challenge here is how do we pull that together and make it useful? How do we turn data into insight? Now, for some of our pro users, these guys who, you know, they know how to connect to the different systems. They know how to go in and get this data themselves. It's fine. It's a little bit of a challenge, but it's possible. However, for our non-power users, uh, people like our marketeers, our project managers, uh, the people who need the information to be able to make data-driven decisions. It's not so easy. And we really want to be able to pull all of this together and put it in one place so it's accessible for them and as useful as possible. Okay. Now, how does BigQuery fit into this? Well, I'd like to talk about how we use analytics and AdSense and pull these into BigQuery. And we can use that as a central location um, for some of our users to, to get the data. I would like to take you through a couple of different examples. The first one is this. We all hate it when this happens, right? So picture the scene. Um, imagine me as a hipster. I will, I've just seen this awesome new blue single speed bike that I really want to buy and make all the other hipster kids jealous. And I'm just about to reply to Clancy, who's selling it, when I see one of these errors. And the worst case is, I think, I'll reply tomorrow, it'll be fine. And then the next day, I see some other kid run, riding around the neighborhood on my bike. You know, the worst case scenario is that makes me never come back to Gumtree. And these kind of issues actually cost us users. It's a bad user experience, and we want to stop it as much as possible. But unfortunately, it's not always simple to do that in the current Google Analytics user interface, although there are some excellent navigational tools. Uh, that help us page backwards and forwards through page views. Some of our errors are actually caused by things that are not page views, things like Ajax requests, things like events that we're tracking. Now that we can actually get the hit level data in BigQuery, we can page backwards and forwards through these user journeys and really start to examine them. So let's talk through how we might do that. OK, so here you can see a query that's um, just requesting some of our analytics data. And in red, you'll see that we've identified our errors using a custom variable. And we're doing a regex match on that at the bottom. Also, you can see in green, we're pulling out the hit number for where this, the error occurs. And the information about the session is in black. The next step, then, is to do a self-join back on this data. I'd like to show you a few things about this. First of all, in blue, you can see that we're joining on the session data. 
Slightly on top of that, you can see that we're using the word each here. Now, the reason why we're doing that is because this is a very big data set. We're talking millions of rows. Um, if it's just a smaller data set, you don't need to use each. The final thing I'd like to show you is the use of flatten. Now, because this analytics data is in a nested JSON format, if we want to be able to repeat, uh, join on these repeated fields, we need to flatten that out and turn it into a virtual flat format. The final step then is to do one more self-join. We can use the hit data that we've pulled out and the visit data, and then pull out all of the meta information about this. Uh, things like the hour when it occurred, the page name of the hit that directly preceded our error, and the number of issues that we're seeing. And if we can just uh, switch over into BigQuery, we can give that a run. Now, this is scanning through approximately 14 million rows just for one of these derived tables. We've done that three times, so that's 42 million rows. And that takes 10 seconds. That's blindingly fast. Okay. So having a table of uh, results is useful. Um, but the great thing is being able to plug this into one of our BI tools, something like Tableau, which we're seeing a lot of love for at the moment. Um, and being able to track this over time and automate the reporting process. From the table, we can just see that, you know, search has given us 1,775 errors. But if we actually map this over time, we get a much more interesting picture, and we can see how these errors have evolved and that which of the different pages have caused the most errors. Now, we're showing an example of using errors here. Um, but the great thing about having all of our hits in BigQuery is that we can investigate any sequence. So if you were wanting to look at a conversion funnel that, uh, for example, started with a page view, and then the user goes on to fill in a form, and then later makes a purchase, we can do that. It's not currently possible in the uh, user interface in Google Analytics. We can only do a page view funnel. So being able to get that kind of visibility is really, really useful. And the even better thing about it is we can look at that historically, and we don't have to apply this in advance. OK, so the next use case I'd like to talk about is how we segment our on-site activity at Gumtree. Now, whenever an ad is posted, it has a number of different attributes. Some of those are simple, such as the category and location. Some of them are a little bit more complicated, such as whether it was paid for. But most of these attributes, um, they're fairly static. They're directly related to the user experience, and they don't change too much over time. However, our business needs can be a lot more changing, a lot more dynamic, um, be that for strategic purposes, for HR reasons, or many other reasons. To illustrate this, let me, um, let me give you a quick example. Let me tell you about my colleague, Rom. Now, Rom's a marketing analyst. He's a great guy. I have to say that in case he's listening. But he's a great guy. Um, and when he started uh, a couple of months ago, he came up to me and said, Duncan, why isn't all of your traffic organized by ISBA regions? I'm like, Rom, what the heck is an ISBA region? I've never heard of that before. So he explains to me it's a non-overlapping television broadcasting region. And apparently, it's, it's very important in allowing us to uh, assess the online impact of our offline marketing. Now, if I wanted to query that in the user interface, what I'd have to do is create a advanced segment and a custom filter for every single region. And then I'd have to query every one of those individually every time Rom wanted this data. So you may ask, why don't we just stick another tag on the site? Well, we're trying to cut down the amount of data that we're sending backwards and forwards to our mobile users. And if we just aggregated it up to these regions that he wants, that might change in time. And you know, we're going we're gonna to lose some of the granularity that we really want. So now that we have BigQuery, how do we deal with this? Well, I just say to Rom, make me a lookup table. And he'll get Excel out, he'll type in a load of values, and he'll make me a lookup table, which I can then upload into BigQuery in CSV format. And we tried to be a little forward thinking here. So instead of just uploading all of the lookup details for our ISBA regions, we'll just upload all of our metadata, because we've got plenty of space to play with, right? OK. So once we've done that, we need to query our analytics data. So here we're using a custom variable. Um, and we're going to call that location level 2, because that's the, that's the level that we want to look at. And we're just pulling out, again, the session data and a, 
a little bit of uh, aggregation just relating to our page views and bounces. These are the metrics that we can sum up with, so we can aggregate them at this stage. The next step then is to aggregate our lookup table so that we're only pulling out the data that we need. So again, we've got location level two. We're also taking location level one, which is our TV regions that we're looking at. We've also applied the filter, so we've, we're only getting back the, the data that we're really interested in. Once we've got these two queries together, we just do a simple join. And you can see red at the bottom, we're pulling out, we're joining on location level two from both tables, and then pulling out the TV region from our lookup table. And in blue, you can see that it's only at this stage, the final stage, that we're actually aggregating that. Okay, so if we just switch over to BigQuery again, and we'll run that. Again, this is running through millions of sessions, and it only takes four and a half seconds. Okay. So if we switch back to our presentation, you can see the results that we've got back here. Uh, we've managed to pull back all of our regions that we're interested in in one query. It was very quick, very easy to run, and we've saved ourselves a lot of time here. The great thing about this as well is we can connect this to our BI tools, and as we're only aggregating at the final point, our users can then use an interactive dashboard and cut and slice this data as they want, and it will never be sampled. So the final use case I'd like to talk about actually brings the AdSense data and the analytics data together. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with A-B testing, it's just the practice of releasing two or more variants of a particular development at the same time, and then we evaluate their performance according to a particular metric, particular goal. This helps us to actually improve our implementation incrementally. Now, when we're doing that for AdSense, we're not just interested in the metrics that relate to AdSense. We're not just interested in click-through rate or, or revenue or, or whatever else. We're interested on how these ads actually impact on our overall user experience, whether it impacts on a downstream conversion, for example, or it affects user engagement. As a result, some of our optimization metrics can be a little bit complicated, and they have to be derived from various sources. Usually this means that we have to go into the different user interfaces, query things separately, and then put them together in Excel. It's a little bit long-winded, and I don't like doing that. I don't like doing anything that I can't automate. But now we have BigQuery, we can, uh, we can just automate, uh, automate the heck out of it. It's great. So we'll just write a quick uh, query on our AdSense data here. You can see that we're using the custom channel name as our AdSense group, and we've just applied a little tag onto our, all of our users in AdSense so that we can identify them from the daily custom channel report. We've also done that in Google Analytics, uh, and we've used a custom variable again this time. The final step then, we just do a very simple query that joins together on those values of our AdSense test groups. So if we just switch over again, jump back into BigQuery, and we'll give that a run. How long do you think it's going to take? 5.7 seconds, that's brilliant. So if we load up the results from that, Now here we have our three test groups. And if I was to just look at the AdSense metrics, I'd see that the click-through rate for test group number three is slightly higher than the others. And I may stop there and just pick this group. However, if we start to combine our AdSense metrics with the analytic metrics, we can see that actually test group two has a high number of matched ad requests per visitor. That means that these guys are actually being shown more ads and they're possibly more engaged. Um, but it could be that actually these guys are just coming back more often, and in a particular session, they're, they're seeing less. So if we also look at our purely Google Analytics metrics, our page views per visit, we see that test group three also has a higher value of page views per visit, which would suggest that these guys are more engaged. And then by being able to look at the bigger picture and look at all of our metrics together, we'd actually pick test group two, which would be different from the, the group that we might have picked otherwise. Now, this is, makes it really easy to get all of the information that we need in one place. And the super awesome thing about this is if we use the same custom dimension for every single AdSense test that we do, we only ever need to set it up once, and we can just sit back and be lazy and, and be happy. 
Okay, thanks for listening, everyone. I'll hand you back to Clancy. Great. Thanks a lot, Duncan. I really appreciate that. So this is, um, that, that shows us what, the power of what this tool can do when putting the hand, in the capable hands of a data scientist like Duncan. And this was actually, he didn't have much time to put, prepare for this. So it's amazing that just with this short amount of time, he's able to start running really interesting queries that can actually really help uh, optimize some of the things that they're working on at, at Gumtree. So thank you very much for showing us that. Um, the next steps for, for, you, for everyone are, if you would like to get started with BigQuery and you haven't already, bigquery.cloud.google.com, set up an account. There's a lot of uh, public data samples there already, so if you just want to start playing with data in BigQuery, it's very easy to do. Uh, for Google Analytics in BigQuery, please register on this form at this uh, URL, or if you want to come by the Ad Sandbox on the second floor, we have this information available as well. Um, the, the URL and the one-sheeter. Uh, and again, we're launching this in September for everyone in Google Analytics Premium. For the AdSense and BigQuery uh, integration that, that Louis demonstrated, uh, the beta is available now, and that there's instructions at this URL where you can go and actually start accessing AdSense data in BigQuery. So we're really excited about this. This is really a step forward for getting more granular data from both of these products into the hands of data scientists who are using the BigQuery tool. Uh, so we're looking forward to see all the really cool things that everybody's going to come up with, and we look forward to your feedback. So thank you very much. We really appreciate it, and we'll open it up for uh, questions. Awesome. <laughs> is that explanatory? Cool. OK. Well, we could do the whole thing again. OK, yeah. Do, do, do you mind going to the, uh, taking the mic so people? Uh, I guess lots of us are thinking sort of what data sources are next then? Like, is there a schedule for them or a priority for them? Or? You mean other Google mm -hmm. data sources? Uh, so we can only really comment on the ones that we work on, on uh, AdSense and analytics. But I think it's pretty clear to see that uh, BigQuery is, is, is Google's big data query and analysis tool. So I think it, it's reasonable to assume that other products will be looking forward to getting their data in there uh, to get into the hands of data scientists. Um, are there any limits to the size um, number of rows in the data sets? Uh, in, in BigQuery? Yeah. There are some limits. They're very high. Uh, I, I don't have offhand the uh, numbers. I know that you can get things like trillions of rows of data um, into tables, and that there are some, in some cases, if you, exp if you try to export a lot of data at once, you might hit a limit. So sometimes you have to just make sure that you're not doing a, a select star across you know, terabytes of data, which might not be able to output. Um, but the, uh, for specific questions uh, on exactly on BigQuery and the other things, the cloud sandbox on the second floor, I might be able to give more detail. It's also all posted. Online. Sorry, I don't have the exact answer for you there. Great. So, um, again, these are the uh, places to go to get more information. And uh, if you do have a second, there's a QR code in the back for rating the session. We'd always appreciate any feedback you have about the session. So, if you can fill out the there. And uh, we'll be down in the ad sandbox as well if you have any other questions you want to ask us in person. So, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Have a good day.